here we go. So if you talk to folks that were here last night, someone might have tipped you off to bring a, a pillow or maybe some rotten tomatoes, because my topic tonight is simultaneously the most boring and yet also the most controversial topic in town, zoning and density. And when I say density, I imagine that a lot of you are thinking of images of tall and probably somewhat generic apartment buildings. But density doesn't have to mean crowding or massive apartments. In fact, there's a form of density that's so subtle that you may not even know it when you see it. My first experience with, with which I had when I moved to uh, Pittsburgh for grad school. I lived in this charming three-unit apartment uh, on the second floor. It was built 150 years ago as a single-family house. And you can tell that it's three units now because there's three mailboxes. The rent was affordable, it was a nice place to live, and I could walk or take a bus to almost any place that I wanted to go. And it turns out we have these here in Bozeman as well. For example, this house, located a few blocks from here, uh, was built in the late 1800s for a prominent local attorney and has since been internally subdivided into five units. And the folks who live there contribute to Bozeman in ways that include as a restaurant owner, an architect, a chef, a USDA employee, and uh, a teacher. Bozeman architect Fred Wilson designed this fiveplex on South Grand, which has been home to countless Bozeman High School teachers over the years and other professionals. It's an apartment, but it blends into the street because it has similar mass and scale and lot layout as the other buildings on the street. And these types of discrete density are all over Bozeman's historic neighborhoods, as seen on this map of the neighborhood south of Main Street. All of the non-pink parcels are multifamily units. In fact, in the Bonton Historic District, which you might think of as single-family central, multi-family rental units outnumber single-family houses. And these are all examples of what planners call the missing middle, which is illustrated here by Dan Parluck of Opticos Designs, and they've got a great book on the subject. And this diagram shows a whole continuum of housing types and forms that would blend in with almost any neighborhood, providing density that's invisible, hidden, or gentle. And there's lots to love about this type of housing. Conforming diversity of housing types adds character to neighborhoods while providing greater housing choice to meet varying needs of different households or different stages in life. Missing middle housing provides more affordable rentals or condos that can be an attainable first rung on the equity ladder. And they're more sustainable not just in terms of adaptive reuse, but their shared walls lower energy consumption, their shared lawns use less water. Their presence creates adequate density to support walkable neighborhoods, which means less tailpipe emissions and healthier people. And they add density in a way that doesn't feel like density. In fact, often the only way to find missing middle housing is to count the mailboxes or gas meters because the buildings look like just any other building. But unfortunately, these types of homes have been illegal to create in most Bozeman neighborhoods since the 1950s. This is what a modern neighborhood looks like. There are two types of housing. There's low density single family housing, and there's high density apartments, and there's nothing in between. Why doesn't Harvest Creek have middle housing? Well, to answer that, let's return to Pittsburgh 150 years ago. It was during the height of the Industrial Revolution that city officials first had the idea to codify land uses to separate the toxic pollution of steel mills and factories from healthier places for housing. Zoning began as a life-saving innovation in city planning, but it was soon put to less salubrious uses. By 1958 in Bozeman, there are only three allowable types of housing. There's apartments for the, middle, for the working class, there's duplexes for the middle class, and there's proud single homes for the upper class. We lumped together modest fourplexes with massive 40plexes, and the middle started to go missing. Now, I'm not a libertarian, but a few years ago, I collaborated with the Frontier Institute to map out where middle density housing is allowed. The color, colored areas are zoned for middle density housing, but you have to subtract back out the pink areas due to lot size minimums and other zoning restrictions to fully understand why missing middle housing mostly exists in areas that predate modern zoning, and where, under our current code, you could turn the structure on the left, which is a home to five households, into the structure on the right, a single family house, but not the other way around. And this one-way valve is a recipe for gentrification and population loss, 
which you'll see on this next map. In the last 20 years, Bozeman's population grew 50%, even while the historic neighborhoods near downtown lost 7% of their population. We are sprawling into the valley, even while the most walkable and amenity-rich neighborhoods and towns in town are literally being hollowed out by zoning. City planners have long recognized this one-way valve as a problem. Plan after plan says we need more missing middle housing, but new rules acceptable to a plurality of res residents to re-legalize middle housing have so far, far been elusive, or in the case of the current draft EDC, been extremely divisive. I believe that middle class and working class people belong in every neighborhood, but, but tall buildings do not. To have neighborhoods that are welcoming to a diversity of people with a compatible range of building types, we need development rules that regulate not social class, but building mass and scale. As one of the fastest growing small cities in America, if we still want to have places that look like this 50 years from now, we can't rely on growing out to meet 100% of our housing needs. But nor do we need to become a city of tall generic apartments if we're willing to allow more middle density housing which looks like this. These types of housing are wonderful, but they're also going slowly extinct due to rules that we've made, but can unmake. So I invite you on your next walk through one of Charming's, Bozeman's charming historic neighborhoods to look closer and see if you can find the missing middle, not just in our past, but in our future too. Thank you.